Well, I'm uh, Jad Fair, and uh, I'm 58. Uh, well, I've been doing a lot of artwork. I, I do uh, paper cuttings mostly and drawings, and mm -hmm. been having a lot of um, uh, exhibitions. And then also I've had a few uh, tours this last year with Half Japanese, and um, also touring with uh, Norman Blake from uh, Teenage Fan Club, and with uh, uh, Jill Reader, who's the drummer in Half Japanese. Do you do a lot of touring still? Well, not, not a whole lot, but I, I still do some. I try to keep it down to two weeks or less. That's a good plan. Yeah, yeah. It's, in some ways, it's easier for me because uh, now, I, more often than not, I can travel by train or uh, mm -hmm. do flights, which is a, a good bit easier than traveling in a, a, a van. van. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the main reasons I, I've I'm doing more artwork now is because I'm able to stay at home mm -hmm. and, and work, which, which is a <clears throat> good thing. Because, um, uh, um, well, my wife and I have uh, two horses and uh, three dogs. Oh, yeah. So it's, it is kind of difficult uh, for me to be away from home. It would be difficult for me to make a living off of just the music or make a living off of just the art. But the two combined, um, you know, I'm not making tons of money, but I'm doing all, all right. Well, I think with the artwork, it, it's more like an inward process, where the, the music is more of an outward okay. um, expression. And I, I'd like to have both. Well, we, I was doing a lot of uh, touring, and it was a lot, I mean, hours and hours in, in the band. And um, I would have trouble uh, reading because I, my uh, eyesight is not that great, and uh, with bumpy roads, I would get eye strain and, and headaches if I tried to read. So then I was trying to do some drawings, and uh, my hand was too un unsteady. But I found that I could handle a pair of scissors fine, uh, which I don't know why that is, but it, I can, uh, even if it's in a moving vehicle. I, I can, do cuttings. You're not necessarily putting the focus in that you would with like music or something like You just let it, <laughs> you let it I, happen. I'd say I put in about the, the same amount of focus in <laughs> art and music, okay. which is about zero. <laughs> um, zero focus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I get up there and do whatever comes natural. Uh, well, I, I think my brother and I always thought we would go into art. Um, you know, that that's when I was going to college, that's what I thought I would do. Yeah. And uh, that's what my brother thought he would do. But but then we released a couple um, records which were well received. And, and that kind of steered us uh, off into that direction. In the, uh, in the rock and roll news, the most important stories all have to do with half Japanese. We came to MTV, said we wanted to guest VJ, and said we had a favorite band we wanted to play the video from. The band was called Half Japanese, of course, and the lead singer was Jad Fair. They told us no problem, they saw the video, and they changed their mind. Run that, would you? I had a funny feeling like You and your brother start half Japanese in like 74 or 75? Uh, yeah, it was 74. Well, we were in Michigan at that time at Grand Valley State College, which is uh, just a little bit west of uh, Grand Rapids. I mean, growing up in Michigan, our favorite bands were um, the Stooges and MC5. And, and I, I, I think that 
was a, a big in, influence on us. I mean, did you, did you get to see him play and stuff like that? Like, well, my brother saw them. Um, okay. I, I I was still a little bit young, to, to you know, because I was too young to go into the clubs. <laughs> yeah. To see them, uh, but my brother is a couple of years older and, and was able to. The band was based there for about a year, and then I moved to uh, uh, Maryland. And about six months after I moved to Maryland, my brother moved out there as well. It seemed like it's pretty easy to play a guitar because, uh, you know, once you know the science of it, that the high notes, the little skinny ones make high sounds, the big fat ones make low sounds. And then if you go in the, the part of the guitar near, the, near where you pluck it, that makes high sounds. And down at the other end, like, then you got it mastered. That's all you got to know. Oh, and if you want it to be fast, play fast. <laughs> and if you want to go slow, go slow. My brother David and I have um, come up with ideas for uh, different comedy shows. Oh. And we've been trying to pitch those around. Boy, we've come close uh, a few different times where we, we thought we would have a deal and then something happens that it, it just doesn't doesn't go through. Some of them are, are um, animated uh, uh -huh. cartoon shows and one would be a uh, with moving uh, different um, doll uh, dolls around. Kind of like <laughs> puppets that. and stuff? Yeah, puppets and stuff. And then w one would I, I would think of would be with real people. Hey Uncle Dave, you hungry? Yeah, I guess so. You want a cheese sandwich? Sure, that sounds good. Well, I think uh, my brother and I are both uh, funny people. I, I, I think it's something we would be very good at doing. The uh, Bullwinkle show is one we all um, would watch a good bit when we were younger. Um, boy, there's uh, The Simpsons, I, I thought, was a, a good show for a good while. And now it's kind of spotty, I, I think. But it, has had some good moments to it. Um, as a comedy writer, uh, I'm, I really like um, Adam Resnick, who um, has done some work with uh, the show Get a Life, uh, yeah. which I, I thought was a real funny show. Well, it, it, I, I have to be mindful of taking on too much because a lot of people have contacted me saying that they want to uh, uh, record with me. It, which you know, I'm, I'm have nothing against recording with them, other than having the time, having the time to do it. Do were these uh, collaborations? Because you've done so many, it seems like were they sought out by you, or were, the, were you sought out by these people? Or well, it, it usually came first as a friendship that I, I would become friends with these people. Mo Tucker. Uh, I mean, I was a huge, well, still I'm a huge fan of Velvet Underground. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to be able to work with her was a, a big kick. Uh, but Mo is such a, a easy person to get along with, and such a, a real person that I mean, she doesn't come on like you know a rock star. Yeah, you know, she's just she's <laughs> just Mo. Just a person. Yeah. School cool person. Yeah. And also, I got a, a real kick out of uh, recording with uh, Daniel Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Daniel Johnston. I did acid with Caroline, and we both had a real good time. Well, Daniel was in, uh, um, in New York at the same time I, I was in New, New York doing some work with Mo. Okay. And uh, Daniel began spending a good bit of time at Kramer's studio. And uh, uh, prior to that, I'd been corresponding with Daniel through the mail. But that, that was the first time I met him in person. And I invited him to my home to uh, uh, stay for a week and do some recording. And that, that's when we did that. It's spooky. I always like a, a big sound. You usually when, when, with rock and roll. I, I like it to sound big. And 
you can do that with um, a lot of tape um, saturation. And if you keep everything in the red and just, you know, blow it out, then it's, it's, it just sounds bigger. So often the, uh, that is done like one track at a time. And then you have the vocals are going through a pitch control thing to right. even things out. And, um, boy, it just takes a lot of the life out of it. Boy, you know, I mean, boy, I, I just look at what's popular and <laughs> man, you know, I, I just can't see it. Step up, up on, on stage, I, I sometimes will have a set list, but I hardly ever stick to the set list. I, I try to be as fluid as I can and try to be as natural as I can. Um, and that's how I do it. Well, I, even now, I hardly ever tune the guitar, hardly ever play chords. I'm, I can do that, but I, yeah. I mean, there's already so many people doing that. And I also like, um, that it's, um, I mean, it's when when it's all chords and and you're trying to play it the same way that you played it before, it it, it just to me it seems too much like one two three four. Well, what comes next? Mm -hmm. Five. It, it sounds all right. I I like the <laughs> way it sounds, um, and it it it's more a uh, percussion. It, instrument because um, when I was first started playing guitar I, I was more interested in how it looked than how it sounded because uh, I would see photos of like uh, Peter Townsend you know smashing his guitar or Jimi Hendrix lighting his guitar on fire and I thought well, you know I can do that see I, I don't really care if it's if it's good or if it's not good. I mean, I would prefer that it be good, but if it's not good, I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I mean that's the audience's problem. You know, it's, it's not mine. Is it, uh, is it always just guitar? Or is there ever like... Well, I do have... Different electronics or... Let's see if I have it over here. This is a little thing that has a uh, pickup in it that I, I can put down and then just, you know, tap on it and it gives kind of like a bass drum sound. Oh, cool. But, which is kind of a handy thing to have. Do you ever utilize any other sort of like electronic things or have any interest in stuff like that? Uh, yeah, well, I've got looping pedals and a um, bunch of different effects. Um, and sometimes even just like your voice, right? That, that oh, yeah, yeah. Well, my last uh, solo album was mainly just my vocal. Oh, no! She has his hand in the place they love! They may wish on the stars up above! 
Well, with that, that um, last uh, solo album, I wanted to kind of get away from guitars because I'd released so many things, which the guitar was, was the dominant um, instrument on it. And so I want, just wanted to... Get rid of entirely. Yeah, yeah. No, is that the uh, guitar or is that the vocal or what? What is that? Guitar. Let me take a second. I'm going to switch leads. Let's get that a try. Well, I think there's always good music out there, but. Um, a lot of times it just does not get the, uh, the same publicity, the same exposure yeah. uh, as it, it, it does. And, and I think the good music does best when the people in charge have no idea what's going on. Where like in, in the 50s, when uh, rock and roll first started up, the people at the record companies had no idea how to handle it. And so they let the young people take over and that's when the music was, was good. And then in the mid 60s, along came music that people in charge didn't un understand, had, had no idea what it, what it was about. Mm -hmm. So they would allow um, the younger people to um, have more of a hand and then it was good. And same thing happened in the late 70s. And, but you know, boy, there's, very, very little that I hear on uh, um, popular uh, radio stations or popular television stations yeah. that seem like anything to, to me now. And I, which is, is not saying that there's not good music out there. I mean, a band like um, uh, Deer Hoof is a great new band, um, Tennis Coats. Um, I mean, there's tons of uh, great bands out there, mm -hmm. but they're just not getting uh, the same exposure. And if what I do naturally is popular, great. And if what I do naturally is something people don't like, you know, that's fine too, but I'm, I'm gonna be me. So let's do it differently. Hey, put on yeah. your red dress and we will walk out in the night Put on your red dress. Yeah. yeah! 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 Put on your red dress. What a lovely, lovely night. Put on your red dress. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anita. Pow, pow, pow. My sweet Anita. Mm -hmm.